loves welcome back to the channel it is that flawless jk welcome to another banking episode i miss you guys and thank you guys for the love on my previous video it has been amazing and i'm thankful for that if you're not subscribed yet take a minute now to hit on the subscribe button and join this amazing youtube family because i'm coming here to deal with all the tea that you've been needing <laughs> without further much ado let's get into the video so today I'm going to be dissecting and talking about dating in the UK as a black immigrant. <laughs> this is a very, very in-depth um, conversation that honestly I should not be having alone. But we're going to start with just me and I'm going to have my friends, you know, probably talk about it with me later on. So we're going to be talking about dating in the UK as a black immigrant. Guys, dating here is ghetto you heard that from me ghetto absolute ghetto you see the way we used to be all lovely and lovely in nigeria i'm sorry that's not how it works here absolutely not how it works here so the first thing that really really got to me was you know how in nigeria now men are always want chasing after women like women literally don't i'm sorry i don't know if you chase men but in nigeria i did not chase after men men really want chasing after me what you see in this place, the way the man is important is the same way the woman is important. Nobody is more important than the other. Excuse me, there are a lot of single women here that are running after men. So if you think you have pride that you're going to come here and you just find one small man, one man that will just come up taking care of you like that. Some people find it easy and on the other hand, some people do not. But don't think that you are all that, that you have arrived and you will be waiting for men to run after you by 40 nobody will be running after you if care is not taken so in this place it is entirely different like in nigeria men used to give women attention come on you guys know what i'm talking about but here everybody's running after everybody in nigeria ah nah 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 you guys know what i'm talking about like women are constantly disturbed by men on the road in your school in your workplace they would disturb you constantly they disturb here yeah, but everybody they disturb each other is in this place that i know that women are asking men out and it's a cool thing like it is no big deal but in nigeria if you're a woman and you ask a man out <laughs> this idea that people will give you eh, you to you know that there's something that is wrong with you secondly in the uk they don't toast women i don't even know if that's the word but you know the way in nigeria or in lagos a fine guy would see you on the road he would approach you try to talk to you to get your contact in this place everybody's scared for their life nobody wants to fall a victim of someone having to call 111 or tell you that you're harassing them sexually and all of that stuff it's shock hey he shook, shocked, whichever English is correct. Like, I feel it got to a point. I had to start thinking that, come, am I okay? Is there anything wrong with me? How can I be fine like this and no man is approaching me in this UK? In the UK? What's going on? God, am I dirty? Like, I had to, like, take care of myself all over again. I had to start wearing cream, doing my nails, fixing my lashes because I don't understand. No man, they, they're always flocking. But when I came to this UK, ah... If it's not that they're using Snapchat or you're on Hinge or you're on Tinder or you're like a dating platform or you're probably like on a WhatsApp group and they get a number from that. I'm sorry, men don't approach women here. In fact, the worst is you expecting a white man to approach you. You have lost it. The only places they can approach you probably like on dating apps or something. Men don't approach women in the UK and this was very very disturbing for me when I arrived here. Now, let me bust your head. One very ridiculous place to meet women or to meet men in this UK is the club. Hold on, I will split. <laughs> At first, in Nigeria, I was not really the club going kind of person. I used to go like occasionally but now I'm not looking for a man. But it has now become a part. I go to the club. I'm sorry if you want to judge, judge. That's your headache. It has become a part of me. Aside from the fact that I enjoy like listening to like loud music and dancing and all of that stuff. The club is one place to meet people. The club is one place to network. You know, in Nigeria, there's this mentality that we have that a girl that constantly goes to the club. She's loose. She's this. She's that. <laughs> Bruh. 
in this place no it's not like that everybody goes to the club everybody knows what <clears throat> excuse me everybody knows what they are looking for so if they are going to find this in that club you're going to see them there so you see that mentality of girls that go to the club in nigeria that they are loose their swords halots whatever it's a lie in this place all of us were you see that thing i will find that statement me i'm a shower you you are shower all of us together yeah <laughs> so like in the uk it's very very disturbing when i came here like people are not on the road people are either in school working or in the club like where do you want to find people do you want to go to their houses or nah nah come off it it's it's just it's a ridiculous thing but that's how it works the club is one spot to find people in this uk another difference is you see sex yeah, I'm gonna say it because I'm a full-blown adult in the UK. It's not a taboo. Judge me all you like. It's your headache. Sex in the UK is not a taboo. You know, coming from like a very cultural place like Nigeria, where even the word sex, they don't point you where you cannot say it like that. Especially in your father's house or your mother's house, you can't just open your mouth and just bah, just say it like that. But you see, in this place, no blood, nobody bloody cares. People are very, very open about what they want. If they meet you that first day, and you know, like the hookup culture that they do in Nigeria, that they just want to smash you that same day, bruh, they're going to tell you, "Hi, hey, you're very pretty. I'm very attracted to you. This is what I want with you. Are you down? If you're down, if you're not down." I don't want to know how you're gonna sort that out but like the way we carry sex in Nigeria as a very I'm not complaining to be very honest I rather stick to like the Nigeria culture when it comes to sex than the UK culture the way we 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 I don't want to use the word idolize or the way we shall carry it as a very important thing it's not important to them here they do it on the road they do it in the club they do it literally anywhere so it was just very very surprising for me that on the first date with a guy they are already <laughs> they're already processing that is it that they're asking you about it or what's your own opinion about it what do you feel do you do you do like one night stand <sighs> excuse me i'm coming from Lagos, nigeria where everything is everything is not safe like that like that when it comes to this 16 don't come up asking me if i do one night stand or all those kind of stupid question but it was very very shocking for me here that sex is a normal thing it's a regular thing come on people of 16 years old in this place they have kids who am i to say that i don't want to mention the word sex <laughs> come off it another difference between dating in the uk and dating in nigeria is you know that whole thing of in nigeria you're walking on the streets a man in the car sees you and they honk for you. Oh, fine girl, pretty girl, where are you walking to? You see in the UK, you will trek. <laughs> you are going to trek that trek because people don't stop on the road for people in this place. I don't want to know how fine you are. You are going to trek that trek to the destination that you are going to if you don't get the bus. Let me give you guys a perfect example. So I was working at a place last year. I think this was around April. So, the distance between my office and the bus stop was a 20 minutes walk. And the distance between my the bus stop and the office, obviously, 20 minutes walk. So, when I got the job, I would constantly think about it. Okay, don't worry. On, on certain days, you know, I might just wave down, please carry me down there. Oh, God of mercy. Even the days where I would wear, like, I would be properly dressed, wear makeup, my hair is on flick, looking like a speck. Bruh, they are not going to stop for you on the road. You are going to trek that trek to your destination. It, it was very, very disturbing for me because in my mind, I'm like, can't someone just, you know, wind down and, oh, hi, you're all right. Where are you heading to? Should I drop you off? <sighs> I know hear things like that it was very very disturbing for me when i arrived here like i think the only time that has happened to me was a time i think i closed from work and i was at the bus stop and these two black guys just like they drove like in front of like the bus stop and they were like oh you're so pretty why are you headed to but um because i saw that you were blacks and they were nigerian men i know for you <laughs> 
I did not follow them inside that car. Apologies. Even if we're in UK, I'm a Nigerian girl with a Nigerian brain. Insecurity is everywhere. You're not going to carry me and go and camp me in your house because you say we're in the UK. So if you are coming to the UK and you think that, oh, as beautiful as you are, cars will stop for you. You are going to trek. Oh, my. The difference in gender role is another shocking thing for me. Nigerians, you people don't know what you have. You don't know the men that you have there. We thanking God for those that are still available. <laughs> because in this place, nobody's going to be sorting your bills for you. To be very honest, it came as a shock to me. And this was because the first date I ever went on in this UK <laughs> over coffee. I paid for my coffee by myself. So you know how um, traditional we are in Nigeria that there's this mentality we all have that men are like the the sole providers even if he's your boyfriend or you're going on dates for the first time it's our mentality to expect that the man is going to pay for everything you guys are going to be having there some girls are even wrote to the extent that they will bring two or more friends you will call them can i bring my friend over they will come they will pay for you they will pay for your friend but you see in this place where yeah, you bring 10 friends you and your friends are going to pay your bills by yourself because <clears throat> to be very honest when you see everyone here packing shirts doing this doing that there are still some men that are still culturally inclined with like nigeria so they do the things they have been doing from the onset in regardless of the fact that they are in the uk and for me to be very honest i would rather a man that has that kind of mindset because i have the mindsets where i have to chip in on days where i can fine you want all the fancy things of life you want all the good things you want your man to buy you this you want your man to buy you that at the same time you have to be a supportive partner i think that's that's how i currently operate in the uk like my man and i can't go for let's say we go to the cinema you buy the cinema tickets you buy the movie ticket rather i buy popcorn and drinks or we go on a date you sort out whatever it is that we eat on that date i sort out transportation it's like both of us have to like chip in at one point or the other but the major thing here is you pay your bills by yourself that gender routine thing drop it in nigeria they don't do it here only if you meet like maybe like a very very kind-hearted person who is ready to do that for you if you probably go on like first date and you know that thing in nigeria where <clears throat> A guy invites you like over to his house, he sorts your Uber. Let's say if you have to travel into states, he sorts your flight and all of that thing. My dear, in this place, you're gonna sort all of that yourself. You are coming to see me because you want to see me. I'm not forcing you to come. You're interested in me also. That's why you have decided that you want to come and see me. So gender roles, I really don't buy it here in the UK to be very honest. Please, men should be paying for all these things. I'm a baby girl, I can't even bother to be stressed also 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 dating platforms is a normal thing here you see in nigeria if you're on tinder somebody should hear that you're on tinder they'll first of all judge you <laughs> they will judge you what are you looking for on tinder have men finished on the streets that you are going to the streets of tinder to go and look for love you are downloading badu you are downloading eskimo or what's new all those apps that we used to use back then so like here in the uk dating websites absolutely normal in as much as from my own experience is a ghetto it is an absolutely ghetto you see tinder <laughs> you see that app that app should be cancelled that is not a good site to be very honest i think these days a lot of people use like hinge they use like bumble and i know that these days they have like christian webs christian dating apps um muslim dating apps they're even like dating apps for like all these bisexual lesbians and all of those sexualities so like everybody has like their preference so in this space dating apps is absolutely normal dating online is absolutely normal compared to like nigeria where number one you have one concern that are you sure it's not yow yow people that you are chatting with so the last difference between dating in the uk and dating in nigeria has to do with fetishes and racism let's start with racism so to be very honest you have to take it the way it is people will not date you because of your color it is what it is some people they don't do blacks some people they don't do whites we do it to the white people the white people do it to us so it's 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 not a normal thing caribbeans don't date blacks caribbeans may date whites i'm not i'm not category category a hey, english 
I'm not saying it as it is. I'm just giving like an example. That word dis it disappeared from my mouth. Categor categoric. Hey, let's leave that word. If you know what the word is, let me know in the comment section. So like, white people don't want to date black people. Black people don't want to date white people. So I think it, right now it's absolutely normal. Some people go after like, some black guys want to date Asian girls. Some black guys want to date jamaican girls some white people want to date black girls some white people want to date um eritrean girls you know it depends it really depends on the person's taste and interest now let's come down to that fetish <laughs> i thought nigerians had fetish fetishes until i came here you see what is my ears head it cannot be on head it cannot be on head I don't know if I'm going to be able to say some of the ones that I've heard here, but ah, very, very disgusting. Let me say it in Yoruba. Ah, God, is it so disgusting to say? Let me just say it in English because I feel it feels more disgusting when I say it in Yoruba. Imagine somebody telling you that they like smelling butthole. Excuse me. Like, what is that? What is that? What is that? I even hear the ones that say, they like like the smell of like a very dirty like your feet you know when you wear like canvas for like a long time and you pull your shoe and let's say maybe your socks is smelling and you have like that smelling feet those are fetishes <sighs> the word is actually coming to an end though the word is really really coming to an end like then when i used to hear fetishes i used to hear things like wait do I see hear things like all those people that will say that they like people licking their ear, they like uh, weird things, but they were not as weird as you like smelling somebody's butthole. Man, what the hell is that? What is that? Uh, you see this UK? If you find a man that checks all your button, he's by the grace of God. So if you see one, hold on tight. With all of this that I have said, there is a huge difference between dating in the UK and dating in Nigeria. Like there are some things <clears throat> I rather bring from Nigeria down here, let them learn. And there are some things that I rather take from here back to Nigeria too for them to learn because both scenes are terrible. To be very honest, both dating scenes are absolutely terrible. They're good size, they're bad size. But in all of this, if you find a man or a woman that is good, up to your taste, fears God, fears whatever it is you have interest in. Um, basically, if you find your spec, please hold them tight. Don't mess up the relationship. If it's something you can handle, you can let go. But in this place, it's not that easy to find the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. If you are bringing the bone of your bone from Nigeria, hold on, <laughs> hold on very, very well. Because if them London girls, them Manchester girls, them Leeds girls, if they catch your man, it's gone. I'm not even joking with you here. They is gone. With these few words of mine, I hope I've been able to tell you the difference between the Nigerian dating scene and the UK dating scene. I will see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video in case you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later.